These are today's UFC welterweight rankings. Today we're going to go on a little bit of a time traveling trip back to the year 2013 when the UFC rankings started. We're going to see what the welterweight division looked like back then and how it's transformed since. So let's go back. This is 2013, February 2013 to be exact, and this is what the welterweight rankings look like. UFC 158 was the first big event for welterweights that year. Three big fights took place, Johnny Hendricks defeating Carlos Condit and Jake Ellenberger defeating Nate Marquardt. Neither of those fights affected the rankings, but George St. Pierre did defeat Nick Diaz, bumping Diaz out of the top five of the welterweight rankings. Roy McDonald bumped up to third, and Jake Ellenberger slipped into the fourth spot. Now speaking of McDonald and Ellenberger, they fought a bit later in the year with McDonald defeating Ellenberger in, a, in an incredibly boring fight. Ellenberger, you're now in fifth. Carlos Condit defeated Martin Campman, but that didn't affect the rankings at all. Jake Shields defeated Damian Maya, which means that Maya goes down, and Shields never actually made it to the top five. Lawler defeated McDonald, bumping Lawler out from nowhere. It was a shocking win, uh, especially against McDonald, a big up-and-comer. So Robbie Lawler was slotted into third. And then George St. Pierre defeated Johnny Hendricks in one of the most controversial decisions in UFC history. So George St. Pierre stayed put. Not for long though, as he soon vacated the welterweight title, leaving the division to look like this at the end of 2013. In 2014, McDonald defeated Maya, but nothing changed. Johnny Hendricks, though, defeated Robbie Lawler to win the UFC Welterweight Championship. And Tyron Woodley defeated Carlos Condit, bumping him up to the top five. Robbie Lawler, after that loss, went on a tear, defeating Jake Allenberger, which bumped Allenberger off of the top five. Roy McDonald defeated Tyron Woodley, a new addition to the top five, so that bumped Woodley down below Carlos Condit. Robbie Lawler, now in his third fight of the year, defeats Matt Brown, keeps his spot at number one. Tyron Woodley then defeated Dong Hyun Kim, which moved him ahead of Carlos Condit, who he had beaten already earlier in the year. And then Roy McDonald defeated Tarek Safadine, didn't do much for his ranking. Robbie Lawler defeats Johnny Hendricks, his fourth fight of the calendar year and he finally wins the championship. And this is the end of 2014, this is how the welterweight division looked. Now, I'm gonna warn you before you go any further in the video, 2015 is possibly the most god awful year for the top of the welterweight division. It's gonna get ugly, you're gonna see no movement and it's, it's just not very good. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Hector Lombard gets a win against Josh Berkman into the top five, but not too soon Hector Lombard. Unfortunately, he fails a drug test and is booted off the top five Matt Brown backup, and nothing has changed at the top of the division. Town Woodley defeats Kelvin Gastelum, nothing changes. How about Johnny Hendricks defeats Matt Brown? Nothing changes. All right, let's throw in Carlos Condit defeating Tiago Alves. Oh, nothing changes. Well, we got a championship fight between Robbie Lawler and McDonald. Amazing fight. Nothing changes, though. Matt Brown defeats Tim Means. Nothing changes. Finally, something changes, and it's Johnny Hendricks missing weight. So, the most significant move in the welterweight division in 2015 is Johnny Hendricks missing weight. Luckily, Damian Maya defeats Gunnar Nelson, bumps Matt Brown out of the top five, and that is your 2015. We had some amazing fights, but not a lot of movement in the division, nothing really changed. Robbie Lawler puts on a fight of the year, another one, this time against Carlos Condit. Nobody moves though, nothing changes, but that won't last long as this year is different. Steven Thompson defeats Johnny Hendricks in a sensational performance, bumping himself all the way up to third, Hendricks to fifth, and Maya off the top five. 
Tyron Woodley's just a little too inactive, so Steven Thompson gets a bump above him, but don't worry, Woodley, your time will come. Damian Maia defeats Matt Brown, bumping him ahead of both Johnny Hendricks and Carlos Condit into fourth. Damian Maia maybe going on a little bit of a run. And Steven Thompson defeats Roy McDonald to secure that number one position. He now is in line for a title shot. But wait, Town Woodley shockingly defeats Robbie Lawler with a first round knockout and is now your champion, bumping everybody else down one spot. And then an even bigger shocker, Roy McDonald is released. Damian Maya, Carlos Condit, and Kelvin Gasolum make it to the top five. And then Gaslam blows it. He misses weight against Donald Cerrone. That fight is cancelled and Cerrone gets bumped up to the top five. Woodley and Thompson have not that great of a fight. A draw. And Thompson gets the number one position because of it. At the end of 2016, this is how things look. And since we just went through... 2017 it's fresh in everybody's minds this is going to be just a quick recap of what the division went through in 2017. We saw Jorge Masvidal entering the top five with a win over Donald Cerrone and then a random shuffle in the rankings put Neil Magny ahead of Masvidal. But don't worry Masvidal another random shuffle in the rankings put you right back at number five. Then Damian Maya defeats Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal stays in the top five, but Maya moves up to number one. Carlos Condit a little too inactive this year, and he drops out of the rankings. Neil Magny gets bumped up to number five, but not for long as Carlos Condit gets above Magny with another random shuffle. Damian Maya loses to Tyron Woodley, back down to third place, and Thompson again is number one contender. And Hafiel Dos Anjos defeats Neil Magny, gets himself a spot in the top five. And the biggest shocker, Colby Covington defeats Damian Maya. Maya down to fifth, Colby Covington from nothing to third. And then Jorge Masvidal loses to Steven Thompson. Hafiel Dos Anjos coming off a hot win, gets bumped up to fourth. And then RDA defeating Robbie Lawler, the former champion gets RDA to second. So a crazy 2017 for the welterweight division. RDA and Covington claiming their spots in the top five. And there you have it. That is the UFC welterweight rankings throughout its entire history. And I know it's only four or five years, but it's interesting to see how much has changed. Damian Maya being the only person to still be in the top 10 from 2013 to 2018 and he never fell off so Damian Maya a true great welterweight again thanks for watching this video recommend to me the next video that you want to see uh, I have some ideas for some great ranking videos I'm trying to figure out which division to tackle next if you can leave a comment down below I'll probably pick whichever division that you guys suggest next well, thank you for watching this video. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I will see you next time. My chair is so squeaky. Just one more thing, I want to leave you with something a little bit fun. I'm going to have the names of every single person that has ranked in the top 10 of the UFC welterweight division, and beside them, the number of their highest ranked spots. So you'll get to see where some of your favorite fighters uh, kind of topped out. So uh, there you go. Here we go.